Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to another Star Made Rail tutorial. In this episode we'll look at our three new blocks, our pickup rail, our pickup point and our shootout rail and how we can utilize them in a basic hangar setup. So you can see here we've got our little test ship, has a little rail docker on the bottom and we have a standard sort of hangar setup with a rail or basic rail coming in like so. If you're unsure how to do this particular setup or you've never used um, rails before uh, then you should check out the start of a series and work your way through. So we'll jump into the ship core and we'll see how we can actually integrate these other blocks. So firstly the pickup rail is super simple to add. It orientates the same way as our basic rail and we just connect it up the same way. Now you'll see it kind of follows straight on to our basic rail and that's all we need to do to make it work. See it kind of has this green sort of hollow look and that's because it's not actually there. If I jump out and fly over you can see this is where it was joining up but alas you can't see it. It's only visible in build mode. So we'll jump back over here into it and for our ship to actually be able to access this and dock to it we actually need this pickup point. So the blue one. Now the pickup point basically pops up like an indicator when you select your rail docker and you can see all the pickup points on a ship where you could actually dock to. And now if it's active you're able to actually fly into it and if you get within a couple blocks radius you will be docked onto one of the rails that it is adjacent to. So in this case it is our pickup rail and it will follow this um, path until it gets onto the basic rails and then into our hangar. So we can demonstrate that now by jumping into our ship and you'll see we've got our rail docker selected and you can see below there it is there's the pickup area and by selecting the actual entity itself you can see it's popping up with pickup areas that you're able to fly towards. So we'll fly towards that particular area and jump in and there we go you can see we're actually docked on and moving now and we're actually traveling along that actual rail into the actual basic rail so that we can hang our, ourselves <laughs> hang our, the the ship rather and there we go that's super simple way to set it up now the pickup rail racks the same way as the basic rail when it go when it comes to logic. So we can control it with logic and change the orientation. The pickup point, however, basically has an on-off switch that we can control using an activation module. So if we grab an activation module, connect it to the actual pickup point and toggle it, that'll set it to off. If I toggle it again on, you'll see it kind of changes orientation a little bit but it means that it is active and anyone can actually come and fly within the radius of that pickup point and actually get triggered to start docking. So using an activation module as a controller is really handy uh, especially when it comes to whether or not a hangar is actually um, occupied or not. Um, so that is really useful as well. Now one of the other things that we have is called the shootout rail and what we'll do here is we'll remove the pickup point for now and the activation module. We'll grab our pickup rail and spin it around. We'll grab our basic rail and spin it around. So now we've got those two for logic and we'll grab our shootout rail and we'll put that on the end like so. And now we can just grab a button and we can use that to just toggle our two rails to go the opposite direction like so. So you can see now our ship is traveling back and this is how the shootout rail works. So the actual ship or whatever entity it is f flows along the rail but when it hits the shootout rail and then hits a blank space you'll see it instead launches at velocity the ship. So you can see there now I've got total control I've been undocked and it's a good way for launching pods or missiles or basically anything that you want to launch. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a great way of getting a little bit of velocity. So that's the shootout rail so we'll jump into our hangar again and we'll show you how to toggle between these two with a basic setup. 
So if we re if we replace them with the pickup rails facing forward again, we can in fact just cheat our way here. Boop. You'll see. All right, now we have our basic rail, we have our pickup rail, and we have our pickup point all set up. Now, first thing we'll do is we'll add that activation module back in and connect it to the pickup point. So now we're able to toggle it. And now we're just going to do two basic setups with orientations. Now, this works the same with the rail basics. If you're unsure about toggling the different um, rails to become other rails, uh, you can check out the tutorials in my rail series. So we'll set that up and you'll see now we've got two hooked up to the two rails here that one and that one and this is our basic setup so we want these two to be active and we want this to be active and that's our setup for when we want the um, people to be able to dock we can count it as being the hangar being vacant and if we select a T flip-flop and just toggle it on and connect it to all the, the activation module and the two buttons this can represent our actual hangar being vacant. In fact, let's grab a green light and we can use the green light to indicate that just here. Like so. There we go. Now, let's attach a knot to our flip-flop. And now this will be when our hangar is occupied. So let's grab a red light and we can use that to represent the, when our hangar is occupied and you can connect all kinds of different other circuits up to this using logic you can um, use it for doing a uh, hangar doors or if you want a force field all kinds of things mattering how you want to handle this now the other thing that we'll do is set up the other situation um, which is with our knot gate and we'll set up our rails so we'll drop our pickup point, same as the other time, only we're changing the orientation to point out. But now let's also add the shootout rail. So we'll drop a button on each. Now we'll select the basic rail because that one doesn't really change, it just changes orientation. We'll select the pickup rail button now and shift V, select it, but we want to fly all the way to the end where the pickup point is and just deselect that very last one because that will then get the one from the shootout rail to become like so. So now that's all set up, let's select our knot and connect it up. So let's have a quick look at what we've got. We've got a T flip-flop indicating whether we've got a vacant or an occupied hangar and that T flip-flop goes into the knot. We've got our controls to set up what we want our rails to do when it's vacant. I've got our controls to set up what we want our rails to do when it's occupied. And essentially this also means um, when we're uh, sending people out and when we're accepting people in. So it's not necessarily occupied and vacant as it is when we're uh, launching people and when we're accepting people or people coming in. Um, we can do some other logic in order to indicate occupied and vacant, but this is a basic setup because once they're in here, you know, they're in here and once they're gone, they're gone. So you'll see when the lights are running. Now, the other thing we've done is that when we're accepting people, we need to make sure that our pickup point is actually active. So you'll see our TV flip-flop goes into that activation module and there we go. Now, one thing that we'll want to also be mindful of is the fact that when we're sending people out and they actually leave, we need to be able to reset. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can do that, but uh, one way we can is just with delays. So what we'll do is we'll add a, another button off this knot, like so, and we'll just place it above. And then out of that, we're just going to add a whole heap of delay blocks. Now, this is all obviously based off the speed of our rail. But we can use our rail speed controller in order to change that. So we'll select the rail speed controller. 
and we'll place this on the other side. We'll select our basic rails and we'll fly over and select our pickup rails. And then we're just going to connect it to one activation module and this will ensure that things fly, uh, travel as fast as they can. So now we've got our delay line, you can see it all lines up like this. And on the very last one, what we want to do is we want to put it back into this flip-flop as well. And that'll cause it to toggle again. So now let's try it out. We'll go fly over to our test ship and jump in on that. We'll go into flight mode and select our rail docker. And you can see there's our pickup area there. We'll fly towards it and there we go. We are docked. Now I'll jump out and actually grab one other really useful thing that we can use, which is the inner ship remote. Now if we grab the inner ship remote and jump into our ship, we can actually add it an inner ship remote as well as a wireless logic. And we'll put the inner ship remote into the wireless logic. And then we'll jump out and drop the wireless logic by our T flip-flop. And what we'll do is we'll select it and we'll send it into a button just to ensure that it behaves itself. And then the button will send it to the T flip-flop. And that's just going to let us be able to trigger our own uh, exiting from this particular hanger. Now it would only work with this one hanger, but that should be fine. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting our wireless blocks and then we've got our inner ship remote which we can rename as launch hanger. And this is just for this example so we can see what we're doing. So if we go into flight mode and we grab that, now we've got launch hanger. So we can toggle that and you see now we're being launched. So we're being moved back and you can see our delay isn't quite long enough. So one other thing we'll have to be aware of is obviously our mass, rail mass enhancers. So what we'll do is we'll chuck a line of that and then we'll chuck a line of power and you'll see we'll get a little bit quicker movement like so. So again, we'll toggle it and we're moving back here. And again, our delay isn't quite long enough. And this will just be you having to play around with how long you need your delay for to get your ships out. In a future episode, we'll look at some more complex ways that we can add logic in, but that will also help ensure that we can detect in another manner. So you'll see, all right, sending ourselves back out. Time accounting down. We're launched. And you'll see it changes from red to green. So now we can fly up ahead again, fly towards our rail docker, and you'll see we get docked. We can add in conditionals as well if we want to uh, when it comes to launching and the such. All kinds of different things that we can do, but you can see for now, that's the basics of sending ourselves back and forward um, with the new actual pieces that we have. So in the next episode, we'll look at how we can use area triggers to help detect us approaching and leaving so that we can ensure that we're getting all this time all correct, but also enabling us to do some other stuff, which is really cool. Until then, my name is Bench, thanks for watching.